Hello, this is Greg Bem, one of the SCC librarians. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate Primo. Primo is the primary search engine and search system used for accessing books, ebooks, articles, videos, and more. This is the central way to get access to information through the SCC library, and it's available to access right on our homepage. When you're at the SCC library homepage, this bar is the easiest way to access Primo. Before we start searching in Primo, let's take a look at some of our options here. This first tab is searching in everything that Primo provides access to. If we click on course reserves, we can search for just that, items within the course reserves in the library. If we want to search for specific journal names, we can do that as well. The links below provide access to other important areas of information the advanced search screen, the databases page, which actually does not have anything to do with Primo, but is helpfully listed here. And you can go to your library account, which is accessed through Primo. As I mentioned, you can search for pretty much everything here on the search bar for Primo. It does not provide access to all of our databases, but most of them are included. Let's give a search for poetry and see what happens. Typing in poetry into the search bar, and then clicking on the search icon, this magnifying glass. This will open Primo in the middle of the screen. Now there's a lot here, and let's take a look at all of it. The top bar here, this bar has several helpful links. If you want to reset whatever you're looking at currently, you can click on New Search, and that will take you to the basic search screen for Primo. So here is the basic search screen. Let's go back. We can do this journal search here. We can do an interlibrary loan request if we're finding a source that we don't have access to. We can look at special collections, and I'll show you that real quick. Currently, they are streaming films, SEC collections, SFCC collections, and audiobooks. And then in the upper right, we have a couple of helpful things. The pin is your favorites and you need to be signed in to view those. Sign in button if you need to sign in, and then a menu that can go to your library card, your saved items, and your search history, all if you are signed in. So let's get signed in. If we click on the sign in button in the upper right, or the sign in button that's here in this gold bar, this will either a, sign us in automatically if we're signed in in other places, including Office uh, here in the browser. If you are not, you'll be asked to sign in. So now that we're signed in, let's take a look at some of these things. If I click on my name in the upper right, I can see that there are a few different options here. I can see my library card. I can go to my loans and my requests. If I click on saved items, that will show that I have saved 661 items. I've also saved several search queries, and I have a search history here. Let's go all the way back to the search results, now that we've seen what we can save. And let's take a look at the interface for the search results. On the left-hand side of the screen, we have all of our filters. Now, I want to point out that what we currently see is going to be everything that we have available through the library currently. But we do have the ability to search beyond the library. And by selecting this toggle, we will expand our search results. Now, when we search for poetry, as we see here, we've got 777,000 results for the word poetry. If I click on expand, it goes up to over a million. But note that many of these sources that it's showing are not available through the SEC library. As such, you may need to do an interlibrary loan request to access them. Below, I can sort by relevance and other options. And below that, I can select full text online, meaning what I'm going to see in my search results are available online. They're e resources. Peer review open access, or held by library, meaning the items that are available 
in our physical library. Over a thousand items within our physical library have something to do with poetry, or at least a single reference to poetry. Note that we are searching within the community colleges of Spokane, including both Spokane Community College and Spokane Falls Community College. If we wanted to filter by location, I would click on the library filter and select which library to look at. Note that SEC has 741 items related to poetry. Also of note, when looking at physical items, is the location. Using this filter can really help narrow down which location this SCC resource falls into. Note that we may have shared access across other locations, including Spokane Falls and some of our remote sites. Let's move on into the middle of the screen here. Next to the number of results we have, we have the ability to save our query to our account. When we click on that, a gold bar shows up at the top, it tells us that we added it to our favorites. It also gives us an access to creating a notification for the search query. Then underneath, we have a list of all of our search results. The search results tell us what type of source this is, the title, the author name, the publication date, and then where it's located. Next to all of this information, we have a link to a permalink where we can save this source and use it later. We have the ability to email this to ourselves, and we can save this item using the pin. There's also other options if we click the three dots. Note all of these here. One that I want to point out is the citation generator. This is located here in the search results screen, as well as within the record page that we'll look at in a minute. You can create the various citations here in MLA, APA, Chicago, and so on, and then copy them to the clipboard to paste into a document of your choice. Let's remove Held by Library and SCC. And now we can see full text online. We know that it's full text online because it has the online access link that is listed at the bottom of the source. Also note that any peer-reviewed sources will have this purple book and eyeball icon and the word peer review to show you that the journal or article is peer reviewed. Let's go down to this ebook for poetry and click on it, which will open up the record page. The record page has those tools that were seen earlier. We have the pin in the upper right. We can go down to the chapters of this book to browse. We can click on view online, full text availability, and the link to the specific database that this ebook is located within. Note that some sources may be available in multiple databases, so you may have options here. Beneath that, you will see a wide variety of metadata describing all of this resource. And below that, you will have access to live chat. If I click on the link to this resource, it will open it up in a new tab in the database that it is located in, in this case, in EBSCOhost, in the eBook Academic Collection database. If you're interested in learning how to use this database or any of the other databases, look for one of the other videos that we've created. Finally, I do want to point out that there is an advanced search button here. If you open that up, you will have the ability to do an advanced search. You could do multiple keyword lines with Boolean operators and several filters that you can activate from the get-go to filter your search result at the beginning. This concludes an overview of using Primo. If you have any questions on Primo or any of the databases, please reach out to the SEC librarians. We're happy to help. Thank you so much for watching. Have a nice day.